Hello and welcome to New Filmmakers Los Angeles in partnership with Movie Maker Magazine. My name is Danny DeLillo. We're here at the South Park Center. I'm delighted to be joined with Ken with his movie, The Rewrite. Let's take a look at the clip. Is that it? No. You refer to your sins, but you never actually say what they are. Is that really necessary? I'd hoped omitting it might lend my life a bit of intrigue. It's a suicide note, Raymond, not the first act to a bloody murder mystery. And if you don't confess, whom do you think they will ask when you're gone? We both know what you did. So you haven't told them yet? Not yet. Uh, Ken, thank you so much for being here. Welcome to the new filmmakers LA family. My pleasure. Uh, for those that haven't seen your film, tell us a brief synopsis. The Rewrite. The Rewrite is a darkly comic noir short set in 1949 in Hollywood. A British screenwriter asks his estranged writing partner to read a letter that turns out to be a suicide note. But old wounds resurface and tempers flare when the estranged partner insists on a major rewrite. It's a really clever story. I am obsessed with film noir. It didn't surprise me that a Brit would ask a question like that, but it wasn't based on a true story, which I'm happy to hear as well. Um, where did the inspiration come from in creating this project? You know, I don't really remember the specifics of it all, other than to say that the note of somebody else, one writer giving another writer notes on a suicide note and are doing a revision of a suicide note to set the record straight, Yeah, uh, tickled me. I thought it was just a funny idea. And so even though this film is film noir, there's definitely a wink. Yeah, and, and, and like, I mean, I did have a very good dark comedy, almost like British sense of humor, which I, which obviously I appreciated. Uh, but for you personally, like you've been very, you've done a lot of amazing things in your career. Um, as you kind of described at the festival, which is like a new act for you in your, in your life and career. What made you decide to make this particular film and, and how did you go about bringing your team together? That's a rather long story, and I'll try to make it brief. I, I, just to recap, I was, I've been in the entertainment industry for a very, very long time. I started as a script reader, worked my way up to being a production executive, and was a studio executive for many, many years until that kind of ran its course, and then I segued into the life of an independent, independent filmmaker, uh, I'm sorry, independent producer, which is not an uncommon transition, what I did to what I d was doing. That took its course as well, and I, at one point I decided to sit down and write a, my first screenplay. It sold right away, got made right away, and that led to unexpected opportunities as a screenwriter. So, I'm writing a lot of movies and I discovered, and TV shows, and I'm, I discovered that there's a period in a writer's life called the reading period where you turn in your script and then just sitting around and what's gonna happen, right? So there's a period of time where you don't know how long you're gonna be sitting around, and I started writing a series of shorts, and I wrote 10 shorts for other, other filmmakers and some actors who want to start their directing careers. But there was one that I didn't have a, a director for and I, on a fluke, kind of I submitted it to Samsung for a filmmaker grant and they said yes two weeks later and they sent me a check two weeks after that. So now I was kind of obligated. And oh, that's how wow. we got here. Well, thank you, Samsung. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Thank you, Samsung. <laughs> um, I love that you actually wrote 10, uh, you know, 10 short film scripts for others, what, what compelled you to do that? It's incredibly fun. I mean, it may be a, a, a hangover from the fact that as an executive and as a producer, you kind of have a short attention span. Mm -hmm. So like if I can write a script in a weekend, which I wrote the rewrite in a weekend, uh, most of the scripts are the shorts I write in a weekend. It's just great and it also gives me an opportunity to work in a crazy variety of genres that I would never get hired mm -hmm. to write in and to take chances as, as well. I mean, I don't, I think that there are a lot of stories that just would never make their way into the landscape of American filmmaking right now as a yeah. feature film, for example, or even a TV series. And uh, particularly on the genre of film noir, um, I mean, I'm sure you can sell our filmmaking audience. What kind of things do you need to look out for in, in creating that atmosphere, that, that design of a film noir film? Film noir is a little bit tricky. I mean, I think that a lot of my attraction to the genre is the same as a lot of people maybe my age, uh, which is that we came up watching those films and, and, and being impressed by those films and being inspired by those films. And while we don't really get a chance to make those in Hollywood, Hollywood really doesn't make, really doesn't make film noir. The Coen brothers dabble in a little bit, but by and large it's not made in Hollywood. So I, I think that, you know, the trick for me was to find a way into it that felt uh, certain modern. I mean, there was a certain homage to classic 
film noir, but also I didn't want it to be uh, a spoof, mm -hmm. right, of that. So, I mean, I think the characters take themselves very seriously, the, despite the fact that there's a darkly comic edge to the film. It is played straight, and the consequences are real, and, and uh, let the chips fall where they may. Yeah, actors really worked well off of each other. Um, you know, it was very well written, and it was, you know, it's always a joy when you feel the actors just enjoy what their, the words that's coming out of their mouths through their characters, and you could really feel that in your film. H how do you work with your actors as a director? So I think that a lot of actors in Hollywood feel like props, and mm -hmm. they don't really feel like they get a chance to act, and mm -hmm. very often they don't get to act in a space that, where they feel their fort is, right, yeah, in terms absolutely. of their abilities, right? So Chris Webster, for example, who plays Harold in the film, you know, he told me explicitly, like, why is everyone casting me as the psycho killer, right? Yeah. I mean, he's a lovely man, he's the nicest guy in the yeah. world, and so I think he was attracted to the, the, the film because he got to play somewhat, somewhat more dimensional, and yeah. he just loved, you know, playing off of Chris Gear. Yeah. And they, it worked out great. They were very, very excited and happy to be in the film. Um, so in all the films that you made, uh, this particular film which you directed, what have you kind of learnt mostly from this particular project? I enjoyed the process. I never really had an ambition to be a director, and mm -hmm. which is why I went so long in my career without ever doing that. Uh, you know, it, it's obviously a very difficult job. I was lucky this first time around to be with just delightful actors, no problems, uh, no drama crew, uh, many of whom were my former film students, uh, and it was like a bit of a reunion in that regard. And so mm. it was really, really lovely. I, I think. I think I'm ready for another challenge, and I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm working on some projects that I might direct as a feature film, mm -hmm. and uh, we'll see how that goes. I'll probably in the next few months. And what's the, is that, it must be nice to work with your film students. Like, how, how is that seeing them and their growth on set as well? Well, to be clear, I only worked with the ones I liked. Yeah. <laughs> I don't like them all, <laughs> but I like these students, and, and I, I wanted to wait. I didn't want to actually work with film students per se, because I wanted them all to have a little bit of real world experience. So all the film students I work with have been out in the world working mm -hmm. in the entertainment industry for you know, two to three, four, five years. Mm -hmm. right? so, and they were thrilled too, because this, this film, I don't think any of them had ever made a film like this with recognizable acting talent. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I think it was in addition to liking the script, they also thought of the project as a way to kind of get a nice credit on the resume. Absolutely, and what's next for you? I'm back to writing. I mean, I, as I think I mentioned, I'm, I'm a full-time screenwriter these days, and I'm always talking to several people about uh, about writing films for them. I'm talking to Netflix about a couple projects. I'm talking to a few independent uh, filmmakers about writing projects for them. Uh, I can't talk about it, of course. <laughs> uh, but, uh, you know, it's just staying busy at that and keep paying the bills until, you know, the, the next opportunity to direct comes along. Thank you. Well, listen, thank you for the rewrite. Um, I also want to say, how many times did you rewrite it? Uh, none, really. See, none. No yeah, really, I mean, uh, no reverts on the rewrite. No I rewrite on the rewrite. It really was just one draft. And, and the, we shot, uh, I think I made one line change. Someone suggested I love that, it. I, that the, what you read is really what came out of my, in a weekend, came out of my typewriter. Fantastic. Typewriter. typewriter. There you go. Uh, well, listen, thank you so much, Ken, for joining us. Thank you for bringing your film to New Filmmakers LA. And thank you so much for the rewrite. We appreciate it. Thank you. you. It was really my pleasure to be here. I really, really enjoyed the, the, the program. Thank you, Ken, everybody. Thank you very much. Thank you.